Hey guys, it's Hunter. Welcome back to another video. It's been a little while. Hope everyone is well. So I've been away. I was at Nam. It was super cool meeting a bunch of you guys. Thank you so much for coming up, for nerding out about Guitar Gear with me. That was so, so awesome. That's like the whole reason I started the channel, to find fellow people to nerd out about guitars with. So yeah, thank you. Then I was in Lexington for a family emergency. Then in Nashville, where I wasn't planning on it, but somehow spontaneously ended up at the Lamb of God Pantera show. It's been crazy. But now that the dust has settled, the brands have done their early year announcements, it's time for some lineup breakdowns. What's everyone up to? What are the trends we're seeing for the next year? And for me, the ESP lineup is always one of the most exciting to look at every year. The vibe is right up my alley. A lot of what they do is tasteful modernizations of classic shapes. What I mean by that is they incorporate a lot of spec, playability, and aesthetic updates for modern day players while still retaining a lot of the familiarity and character that we love about the traditional shapes. That balance between tradition and modernity is so difficult to achieve. Most brands skew either heavily one side or the other, and for me, ESP has always been one of the best at finding a middle ground. They're obviously also just a massive player in the guitar world, and therefore one of the key benchmark indicators of where modern mainstream guitars are going. They were one of the first to adopt Fishman Fluence in their production import models, now everyone's using Fluence. I can't remember if it was them or Solar that put an Evertune bridge in a production model first, but once ESP started doing it, look at that. Evertune started popping up in Schecter's, Jackson's, Ibanei. So what have they done this year? A lot. And we're gonna talk through all of it. So smack a like on the video if you're going to enjoy it. That actually massively helps please the insatiable YouTube algorithm more than you might realize. Pray for my editor, or it might be me if I end up editing this and let's talk about ESP's new lineup. All right, let's start first with what's getting the most amount of coverage. The LTD EC01 FTs in black, Olympic white, and in vintage burst. So when you look at these, it's like, all right, LTD have made their own version of a Les Paul Jr. About time. But there's a lot more going on here too that you don't notice until you pick one up in person or have the thought process literally explained to you. Now, it was really cool at NAMM. I got to speak with Mr. Blue Wilding at ESP. He was a key player in designing the new lineup. We were nerding out about the details and it was awesome being able to hear his thoughts on how ESP approached certain models and get more context on the designs to share with you guys. So apparently the story behind these EC01 FTs is they were born out of numerous artist requests for a full thickness flat top pure workhorse eclipse. Single pickup, single volume knob, just a proper high spec road warrior. One that could fall off an amp or have a beer spilt on it and it'd be fine. You know, average touring musician requests. But on the spec side, it's also got a recessed bridge, so that solves one of the big complaints people have about flat top Les Paul style guitars. Normally, the tunematic bridge is raised, so you need to get the neck angle right, otherwise you can only get the action so low, especially with certain stop tail bridges. By recessing it though, by bringing it down into the bottom, you still got the two pneumatic, but with more of that Floyd Rose or modern low profile hip shot feel. Blue said that actually a lot of the ESP artists that requested this model are in their single cut phase, but had grown up on the Floyd. So in the design phase, they came up with the recessed bridge to merge those two worlds. And as a plus, you don't have to deal with the floating Floyd fuckery. Awesome. Then the specs we're accustomed to from higher end LTDs, ebony fingerboards, stainless steel frets in just the extra massive size that ESP uses, the thin new neck, which is still my favorite neck shape ever. I just love Eclipses, man, what can I say? The exclusive Seymour Duncan Custom 14 pickup, which has a triple ceramic design and is basically the love child of a Black Winter and a Custom. Now the Black Winter is one of my favorite Seymour Duncan pickups. It's definitely one of their more modern sounding. And Ola said the Custom is his favorite. It's more of an overwound PAF. So a combination of the two sounds like a pretty sick concept. Blue kept saying how proud they were of how the Custom 14 turned out. He says it's like a one-stop shop for all the tones that people generally buy ESP and LTD guitars for, so expect to see a lot of this pickup going forward. Then the volume is push-pull to split the coils. Little insider detail courtesy of Blue, scratches on Seymour Duncan's aged covers usually go the long way, but for this, ESP had them match the direction of the pickguard. It's such a small thing, realistically, how many people would notice or even care without it being pointed out, and maybe you still don't care, fair enough. Subconsciously though, it helps tie the whole thing together, and it's just an example of the behind the scenes thought that goes into guitar design that you won't get from a product page or a spec sheet. Block inlays, but not on the first fret. Again, Blue explained that they did that because the extra inlay tricks the eyes into making the guitar look longer and without the neck pickup, that just looked super weird. We talked a lot about this guitar, okay? I love it, it's a sleeper guitar. First glance, looks like a traditional classic in a lot of ways. Upon closer inspection, it's a modern beast of a workhorse. I should probably demo one on the channel, right? Yeah. Glad we're all agreed. Finally moving on, the EC201 FT is the more affordable version in black 
and then see-through cherry with roasted Jatoba fingerboards. Very similar vibe, it's still got the full thickness flat top body. Then it's got ESP's standard L150 humbucker that comes in most, if not all, of the 200 level LTD ECs. It's still got that push-pull coil split. Not my favorite pickup, honestly, but with a good amp or a good plug-in, it works just fine. Apparently, Max Cavalera even prefers it to brand name pickups, so take that as you will. Then the 201 FT also doesn't have the set through neck carve or the recessed bridge, so it's more of a traditional one pickup single cut model. And while that's cool, it's got its own more classic vibe. I'm just hoping for future runs they can add recessed bridge models that are more in line with the playing experience of the more expensive EC01 FT. In theory, it's not too difficult. To be fair, the EC256 has always had more of a classic vibe than the EC1000s, so maybe it was intentional to have a more traditional single pickup EC model in the lineup. Either way, full thickness body, those extra Jumbo LTD frets, and the super comfortable thin U neck shape seems like some solid mod fun. Speaking of quality, consistency, and solid fun though, let's take a quick second to thank One Shot Energy for sponsoring today's video. One Shot is revolutionizing the world of health and sustainable energy through their supplement infused candies, and they're not just a sponsor. They're most known for their focus and energy chews, which are awesome, but if you watch the channel, you've heard me talk before about One Shot's voice drops, developed with Matt Hafey of Trivium for musicians, streamers, anyone who needs to protect their voice. Shivani says my serial killer trait is how many cough drops I go through recording these videos. The voice drops work way better and it's nice to not look like a serial killer, but oh my god, they were absolutely essential at NAMM. It's loud, you're having shout conversations for hours. First day, forgot to bring them. Voice immediately wrecked. Second day, brought the voice drops. Holy shit. We can shout talk all day, no problem. And then I'm very sensitive to caffeine, so their caffeine-free focus chews are amazing to stay on track. Full of vitamins like B6 and B12 and fortified with zinc for a natural energy burst, plus nutritional benefits and immune system support. When you do need that extra kick to get that important thing done, One Shot's energy chews have 75 milligrams of pure caffeine and additional nootropics. At work or on the road, just pop one, get energized. It's super quick, love it. And unlike an energy drink, One Shot never uses artificial sweeteners or fillers no excess crap, just energy and focus. It's also more cost efficient than standard energy drinks, and as a channel partner, OneShot is offering you guys 10% off the entire site using my code AGAFISH. Link will be in the description, use code AGAFISH for your special discount, and of course, clicking it helps support the channel by letting them know that I sent you. And while you're checking that out, let's get back into guitars. Moving over real quick to signature guitars, Mastodon has always been big into Silverburst, and Bill Kelher is firmly in his LTD Silverburst era. His BK600 and Sparrowhawk were both recently given vintage Silverburst updates, and this year they announced the Royal Shiva. Now, there are a couple of theories as to the inspiration here. What I'd initially immediately thought is that this was a six string based on Brent Hines' custom first act 12 string. It's one of the more iconic Mastodon guitars that Brent Hines played a lot during Crack the Sky. And yeah, if you didn't know, the same first act that sold all those cheap starter guitars in the Walmart toy section also randomly had a super high-end US custom shop headed by a former Gibson custom shop guy. The claimed endorsee list was pretty impressive too. Brad Whitford of Aerosmith, Matt Pike of High on Fire, Lee Malia of Bring Me the Horizon. Dunno man, crazy shit. We move. Then you guys pointed out that Bill Kelleher was a Yamaha artist in the mid 2000s and even played a custom SG-1000 in Silverburst. Okay, so that's the original inspiration, right? However, the real, real final inspiration for the Royal Shiva, as confirmed by Bill himself, is his custom first act nine string DC Lola that weighs a monstrous 13 pounds. Essentially, he says he loves his heavy guitars and he had ESP Japan make a custom shop copy down to the back-breaking weight, but in six string. The LTDs are definitely not going to be 13 pounds, probably more like eight, nine-ish of a normal EC-1000T, but that was the basis for this production run. So the Royal Shiva is actually an LTD based on an ESP custom, based on a first act custom, based on a Yamaha. Got there in the end. And because the original inspiration comes from outside the ESP world, the specs aren't generally what you'd find on an LTD. Regular set three-piece maple neck with a U-shape, and I could be wrong, but I don't remember any other recent U-shape LTDs or ESPs. It's either all thin U or extra thin U. Then while pretty much all LTDs come with a 14-inch fingerboard radius, this has a subtly rounder 12-inch radius, like what you get on ESPs or E2s made in Japan. I'm a big fan of that. The BK600 has the 12-inch radius as well, and the fact that it feels closer to my ESP standard than other ESPs is a big reason as to why it's one of my favorites. The Royal Shiva even has a bone nut, like MIJE2s have. Then you might expect the Revstar, the SG, 24 and 3 quarter inch scale length. Nope, 
25 inches. Slightly better for lower tunings, sick. Then it's got Bill Kelleher's new signature Motortone Hellbenders, same ones as in his other two signatures. Okay, real quick, I swear, I'm not gonna talk about every new signature this much. To be honest, I don't even like the double cup body shape that much, but the specs and history behind this one are just particularly interesting. There's so much context and so much story. It's kind of the result of Bill Kelleher's multi-decade refinement through multiple designers across the industry, now modernized with LTD standard specs like the extra jumbo frets, the locking tuners, Tone Pro's locking bridge and tailpiece, and it's silver burst, just very cool. If you haven't clicked off yet after that long rant, Ted Aguilar of Death Angel has a new single cut named the Ted EC. That checks out, makes sense. It's pretty similar to his previous all-white Ted 600. Neck through construction, all mahogany besides the maple cap and the ebony fingerboard with mother of pearl inlays. White EMG 8160 combo with white pickup rings, locking tuners with pearloid buttons. Love that little bit of extra class on a metal guitar. This time instead of gloss white, it's in satin black, simplified even further by getting rid of the tone knob and they've recessed the bridge. Again, the point is more of that modern low profile bridge feel and I have a feeling this is gonna be a theme on Tunematic equipped LTDs going forward. Just like I hope to see more of you guys going forward because it turns out over 928,590% of viewers are not subscribed. A little reminder to do that if you haven't already, stay updated on guitar things and it really helps out. George Lynch, the very first ESP in Dorsey, is moving on from the famous Kamikaze graphic guitars. The LTD Desert Eagle still keeps the general design and layout, but the image and colors pay tribute to a Native American theme. Turns out George Lynch is super passionate about Native American issues. One of his recent side projects was the documentary Shadow Nation. Now ESP owes a lot to George Lynch and to the Kamikaze guitar. He came to them in the 80s when Dawkin was huge and it's been one of the most successful and recognizable instruments for decades. That being said, Given where ESP is based and the historical context of what the Kamikaze imagery glorifies, while they probably never said no because it's George Lynch, I am positive they're probably more comfortable with this reimagined version. And it's the first Lynch model with stainless steel frets. That's cool. Mil Petrosa of Creator has a new signature MKECFR, and a lot of metal guitars these days are moving away from the EMG loaded, blacked out, super serious, metal ass looking metal guitars of the past. Then Mill's gone and done the exact opposite. All satin black flat top single cut with a Floyd Rose, the white neck binding from his previous MK600's gone, replaced with black. And since 2016, his signatures have had fluence moderns, but he's one of the few players making the switch in the opposite direction back to EMG with an 81X and 50X. And the X series is great in fairness. Same tightness with EMG's signature tonal character that cuts through mixes super well, but with more headroom, so less compressed, more dynamic. It's pretty much like doing the 18 volt mod without adding an extra nine volt battery to the circuit. And even though it looks like a, what did I just call it? Old school metal ass metal guitar. <laughs> it's still got stainless steel frets, lumen lays, so it's old school updated for the modern times. Then the LTD Volsung for Lars Fredrickson of Rancid has a new Oxblood satin finish. Mostly the same specs, like a signature EMG LFDMF pickups and Goto tuners, but they've added lumen lays and reduced the frets from 24 to 22, so the neck is in that sweet octave spot. And lastly for new signatures, there's Gary Holt's SV200, a more wallet-friendly version of his higher-end SV. Roasted Jatoba fingerboard instead of ebony, bolt-on neck instead of neck through, Floyd Rose Special instead of a 1000 series, gross, and no EMGs. But the ESP design pickups have red plastic covers, it's got all the red binding around the body, neck, and headstock, the red logo. Gary Holt's metal as hell signature aesthetic is all here, and actually it's randomly got stainless steel frets as well, which I did not expect given the rest of the spec list. I'm not mad about it though. In a similar vein, the new EX200 and Olympic white with black plastic covers on the ESP design pickups may or may not be a not so subtle wink and nod to a certain other famous Bay Area thrash metal guitarist since Gibson won't let ESP use the MX220 shape anymore. About as subtle as an air horn in the library. Chuck in an 8160 or a headset and you're good to go. The Viper 256 has pretty much identical specs and now comes in Olympic white as well. Much more classic look than the previous ones with 22 frets and a pick guard. I'm curious, did you notice this too? It's interesting what ESP is doing with the pickups at guitars at the 200 series level. They no longer have the ESP design branding and the idea is to remove that immediately 
immediately associated stigma that comes with non-brand name pickups. You know, try them yourself, see if you like them, rather than have the well immediately poisoned just because of the name on the bobbins. And they've also changed the looks, whether to look more like EMGs with the solid plastic covers, or in the case of the Viper, the matte plastic bobbins are reminiscent of the modern metal focus Seymour Duncans like the Pegasus or Sentient that come in the higher level Vipers. Last couple of years, they've really been trying to establish this new modern clean aesthetic for the higher end guitars. Makes sense they then try to trickle that down to the more affordable price points. Same with the new EC256s, new colors and nice old school vintage gold satin, then candy apple red satin and see-through black cherry sunburst. The latter two colors again have those matte plastic bobbins and that subtle detail brings them more in line with the more modern look the EC1000 is going in. For example, the recent see-through purple or black natural burst versions. And it makes sense, the EC1000 has been such a key staple in LTD's lineup. For well over a decade, it's been one of the top recommendations for metal guitars. Everyone's either owned or played one. It was the metalcore guitar everyone had in the 2000s and all its abalone and EMG glory. Well, times are a-changing. Black and see-through cherry, two of the most popular legacy colors that have been around pretty much since the EC1000 originally launched, have been discontinued. In their place though, LTD have new modern versions. Same colors, but spec'd more in line with the rest of the modern LTD lineup, and that means sans abalone. Still 24 frets, except now they're stainless steel, and they're direct-mounted Fishman Fluence Moderns. Gold in the black for more of that modernized black beauty vibe, and black nickel on the black cherry quilt. Honestly, for how much sh I give the abalone crazy versions for just being over-the-top gaudy, they were fun, but they started looking like relics of a bygone era and it was definitely time for an update. The HD remastered versions are so much cleaner, but it's still sad to see part of my childhood relegated to the archives. Time comes for us all. Not to be left out, the Viper 1000 has an almost matching version with direct matted gold fluence moderns and vintage black. It's kind of interesting. When LTD brought back the previously discontinued Viper 1000 a couple of years ago, they were almost updated versions of the 2004 EMG baloney models. That contraction was a pure accident, but f*** it. EMG baloney, I'm sticking with it. Red and purple flame tops, white binding instead of abalone, and direct mounted Seymour Duncans instead of EMG. So if the roadmap holds, I wouldn't be surprised to see the EC1000 in vintage black that hasn't really changed since, I want to say, 2006 also updated and relaunched in a way that resembles the new Viper 1000 with direct mounted gold fluences. You know, maybe the lovably gaudy versions will get special anniversary reissues later down the line, like with what happened to the 87 series. These are import reissues from ESP's 1987 catalog, and if I recall correctly, it was supposed to be just a limited thing for ESP's 45th anniversary, but fans loved them, they're still here, and they're still adding to the series with the Horizon Custom 87 in black, in candy apple red, and in pearl white. Neck through construction, Seymour Duncan custom and hot rails that can be individually split, Floyd Rose 1000 because, well, the 80s. Interesting how there are no inlays, it kind of makes it look like an 80s and modern super shredder blend. By the way, if you want any more details, I'll have affiliate links in the description for all the gear we're covering. You can also bookmark them to support the channel if you're picking up anything from Sweetwater or Toman later. Really appreciate you if you decide to do that. The SN1000 has a new satin koa color with an Evertune. Everyone's talking about it in the EC01FT, but this also has the new Seymour Duncan Custom 14 in the bridge paired with an Alnico 2 in the neck. The SN1000 is such a sleeper series. You could easily write this off as yet another generic metal super strat shape, but spec-wise, it's got a compound radius fingerboard, stainless steel frets, and the fingerboard is scalloped from 15 to 22, which is fucking awesome for leads. Solid spec sheet, but the scalloping? No other big brand is doing that on their imports. They've also added a seven string version of the Fire Blast color. It's like sunburst on a sandblasted ash body. Ash blasted, if you will. 27 inch scale length, which is considered baritone since ESP's normal seven string scale length is 26 and a half. Fluence Moderns, Hipshot Hardtail, five piece roasted maple and purple heart neck, scalloped 17 to 20 second frets. And this one is sick, I love it. SN1. Hardtail Baritone. Again, 27 inch scale length, matte black pick guard, ebony fingerboard with actual mother of pearl inlays, scalloped from 17 to 22, hip shop bridge, single brush chrome fluence, five piece roasted maple and purple heart neck, one volume knob, so I guess you lose the third single coil voice, but oh well. Man, I've been really enjoying baritones recently. Love tuning super low and six strings with a longer scale length. It still feels like playing a normal guitar. It's much more comfortable than seven or God forbid eight strings. And this one is so fucking clean. That being said, this next one is probably my favorite of the entire new lineup. The EC1007 Baritone Evertune. Holy fuck. Yes, 
please. Evertune, so no pitch drift, it never goes out of tune. You've got the multi-voice aspect of the updated Fluence Moderns for active, passive, and single coil sounds, all paired with the classic 50s Black Beauty tuxedo look. It's perfect, <laughs> oh my god. I wonder if Les Paul himself would be amazed or appalled by the power and pure chug potential of this thing. It's like Archimedes observing the power of the atomic bomb. Stainless steel frets, of course, and I love how ESP changes the neck angle on their Evertune Eclipses to use the cleaner F-style Evertune instead of the G-style with the little tailpiece ears you have to use if you retrofit a standard Eclipse or a Les Paul. Dude, the LTD single cuts are going off this year. Now, I wasn't expecting this, they've kind of done the same thing in the pointy ass Aero series, a seven string, 27 inch scale length baritone loaded with Fishman Fluence Moderns and an Evertune. Everything blacked out on this one though, no color here, this thing is metal as fuck, man. I don't know what else to say about it, that's literally the only way you can possibly describe it. Look at it, what a goddamn monster. There's also a new Aero 1000 color, Dark Sunburst Satin. It's pretty much a colorized version of the previous Charcoal Burst Satin version. Direct Mountain Black Nickel Fluence Moderns, Floyd 1000 SE with upgraded stainless steel parts. I love how this one looks relatively tame, but only because we've just come from the blacked out seven string baritone super metal chad version. Then LTD have brought back the XJ shape in the XJ1 hardtail. It's kind of an offset sister model to the SN1 HT. Ash blasted body, hip shot hardtail, Fishman Fluence Classic, bolts on three piece roasted maple neck with an ebony fingerboard and stainless steel frets. It looks sick, right? Modern Jazzmaster workhorse built for the chugs. And I was so hopeful because it was so close to the SN1 hardtail. I was like, is this the moment? Is this when they finally bring scalloped frets to more LTD shapes? Nope. According to Blue, turns out that trying to scallop frets with block inlays doesn't work out too well. If you want to scallop a board, you can only really do it with small inlays like dots or mini skulls on the KH3 Spider. So that explains why it's not on more of the lineup. He said they played around with dots, but block inlays looked the best on the XJ. It also doesn't have the compound radius fingerboard like the SN does. So yeah, they look similar, but under the hood, they're kind of not. Though I guess in theory, you could swap the necks if you wanted and had the cash to burn. Either way, the XJ still looks fucking awesome. Awesome. More offset single pickup goodness in the Phoenix 1001 that now comes in tobacco sunburst quilts with the new custom 14. So it's like a more ornate neck through version of the ECO1 FT. You know, I'm a big fan of single pickup guitars and of this modernized take on the Firebird, but I don't love this one as much as I thought I would. Maybe it's because the body is so big, there's just a lot of empty space. The other ones they put a Seymour Duncan Fat Cat, basically a humbucker sized P90 in the neck, and it's perfect. The H3 1000 has a new metallic silver Floyd variant. And at first, I thought this was just the Black Sunburst version in a new color. But no, that has the Pegasus Sentient set, and this has the new Custom 14 paired with an El Nico 2. The Carve Top MH has two new Charcoal Burst editions, one String Through, the other Evertune. Love the custom saddles to match the brush chrome pickup covers. But yeah, the direct mounted black nickel fluences are so much cleaner. And finally, the M series kind of caps off the two themes we've seen throughout the entire new 1000 series line. A streamlined single pickup version, bolt on neck, black and gold color theme, and a seven string baritone version with a set through joint. Both with direct mounted fish and fluences, and since this is ESP's classic shredder shape, they've also both got Floyd Roses. There's also a new color for the TL6 thin line acoustic, and actually Fred LeClerc has a new signature bass that's one of the most evil things I've seen in a while. You know, if you can about acoustics or basses but anyways okay this is such a long video let's wrap it up what are the takeaways to me a few things stand out the first damn poor EMG in fairness this is kind of a continuation of a trend that we saw start a couple of years ago but there was a time when ESP and EMG were almost synonymous everything came loaded with at least an 81 in the bridge it was a big deal if something came loaded with Seymour Duncan's instead and it was like that pretty much since I found out LTD was even a brand. But in 2024, unless it's an artist model, not an EMG in sight. Even two of the most iconic EMG loaded guitars of all time are gone from the lineup after an almost two decade run. It's all either Seymour Duncan or Fishman Fluence, and in fairness, both are great pickup manufacturers. If you watch the channel, you already know how much of a fan I am of Fishman Fluence. Huge fan, big, big fan. The clarity and multi-voice aspects are just incredible. But yeah, previous years, ESP, LTD, they'd been moving in this direction. The super compressed and polished 81 isn't as popular as it was, but there were at least a couple of new models that came loaded with the TW variants, which have coil splits, 
for the 5766 set, which is awesome by the way. At risk of sounding like EMG's marketing department, they blend EMG's tight punchiness with the dynamics and warmth of passive pickups. But yeah, not even those this time. Now in fairness, I asked, Blue said that they still love EMG and that there are still plans to use EMG going forward. And as a pickup brand, they still have loads of high profile artists, but as a signal to the rest of the industry, a basically EMG less lineup from LTD speaks volumes. No bare knuckle either for that matter. When they started shipping in last year's higher end E2s, I think we all kind of expected them to start showing up on the import LTD lineup this year as well. That's usually how it works for most brands, but nope. Besides artist models, Fishman and Seymour Duncan for the 2024 LTDs exclusively. Kind of continuing on that point, no new E2s either. It sucks, but that's actually kind of understandable. They've been trying to make up ground on a ridiculous backlog for a few years now. Last year, they announced that all new E2 models would have stainless steel frets, and they just announced a couple weeks ago the entire Japanese factory was switching over to stainless steel for every single model. Seems simple, but changing factory processes properly does take time. I'd imagine that's been the focus. And the last thing they wanna do while they're trying to catch up is add to the backlog by announcing new models. Let's not forget, they actually have done this before. I think it was 2020 where they just couldn't keep up with orders and announced basically nothing to try to catch up. So I get it, it's disappointing. The Japanese production models are so goddamn good. I literally did not understand why anyone would pay for anything more expensive than a high spec Epiphone before I tried an ESP standard and it blew my fucking mind. Especially with how bad ESP's backorder situation has been across E2, across LTD, across ESP USA. They're not going to announce anything if it's going to be a long time to ship. You know what they could have done to tide us over though? Change the name back to ESP standard with the proper ESP logo. <laughs> so much better than E2. This next takeaway is kind of a sour one, but wow. Guitars are expensive now. Let's use the classic EC-1000 as a benchmark. It used to be such an easy recommendation because pre-global health event, it was comfortably under a thousand bucks. Most of them are back ordered, but on Sweetwater, another classic and vintage black is $1,100. A few more recent ones, $1,300. These new ones, $1,500. At least guitars are getting to retailers now, but oh my God, the price jumps every year are crazy and they just keep coming. This is by no means just LTD, by the way. The cost factories abroad quote to produce guitars, then get them shipped to the US or Europe, is astoundingly expensive. To me, it's just more noticeable with LTD because along with Schecter, consistently good build quality, all the modern specs, they used to be unquestionable value for money for rock and metal players. Nowadays, I mean, the market is so ridiculous that in that context, with the specs and quality, they're still competitive with the other brands, but the sticker shock on some of these is still very real. $2,000 for the LTD Royal Shiva. Even the 200 series EX is $600. I hate it. I understand it because from my work with Harley Benton, I know what's going on with factory and shipping prices, but yeah, I hate it. And lastly, the single pickup guitar trend is still going strong. The black metal and Arctic metal series are still super popular. We saw a lot of brands dropping single pickup guitars with simplified control layouts this year. The main talking point of this lineup is a single pickup guitar. There are eight in total. The workhorse instrument is in right now. Not really something I saw with other brands, but specifically with LTD, you can see that in the colors too. Even last year, there were a lot of bright, vibrant tops, blues, greens, purples. This year, warm colors, if any colors. Abalone kicked to the curve, much more serious and subdued across the entire lineup. Counterpoint though, meanwhile, McThompson's out here playing Slipknot riffs on a Jawbreaker guitar. Fucking <laughs> love it, make that the signature. Real quick, Hunter and Post, yes, I did end up making the mistake of editing this colossal video myself but I noticed here that because of how bad the back order situation was and how much of a delay there was in new model shipping sometimes, that when I was filming this video, I was getting confused between the new models announced pretty much from 2021 to 2023 let's call them the global health event years. It's still wild to me that you can get demonetized for saying the actual name, but you know what I'm talking about, we move. Case in point, Nurgle Behemoth had a new high-end Hex 6 signature and its affordable counterpart Hex 200 announced for NAMM 2023. Technically, it's not part of the new for 2024 lineup, but with how many new models ESP has announced over the last couple of years and how extraordinarily messed up supply chain has been over the same period, I guess they're just now getting to retailers because Sweetwater is treating them as new models for pre order. And this exact scenario has been playing out for all of the global health event years. Models could be announced in 2021, only become available in 2023. Sweetwater would treat them as de facto new 2023 models alongside the rest of the official new for 2023 lineup. So the global health event 
content models have kind of just jumbled together for me. Luckily, the availability situation has gotten much better for this year, and the 2024 lineup takeaways still stand, but yeah. My bad. I'll let Past Hunter take us to the outro. Anyways, this video is about 20 hours long now, so that'll do it for me. Here's where I'll throw it to you. What do you think of the new LTD lineup? You love it? You hate it? Thinking of picking anything up? And even if not, which of the new models do you think is the coolest? Any and all thoughts, drop them down below. Massive shout out to my amazing patrons. Their names are up on the screen right now. Consider joining them if you want to directly support what I do. You can also join as a channel member or pick up some comfy merch. All that really helps out. As always, thanks so much for watching. You've been awesome, and I'll see you for the next video.